learners and listeners welcome to ni studio i am dr shweta and the topic of discussion for today is what is self it is lesson number 16 so let us begin with today's topic so as the name suggest what is self self is focus of our everyday behavior and all of us do have a set of perceptions and beliefs about ourselves this kind of self concept plays important role in motivating us and organizing our behaviors it starts evolving early in life a sense of self awareness grows among us when we grow in fact all of us engage in experiences which enhance our sense of self as rogers said we want positive regard from others that is we have a strong need of being loved and valued by other people the study of self and its functioning is a fascinating topic so in this program we are going to learn about the way self is conceptualized and how the different aspects of self are related to human behavior before we begin we must know that what are the objectives of this program so today we will be able to explain the concept of self explain the different levels of self which are conceived in the indian thought as well as we'll be able to describe the different aspects of self and appreciate the value of self awareness also we'll be describing about the relationship of self with other processes so let us begin with the first one which is what is self concept so if someone asks who are you then we often describe the physical features traits goals motives etc which is the person is tall short good looking or is very intelligent so this is how we describe someone the self concept actually is a collection of diverse information it constitute a central aspect of psychological functioning that is what do you think you are however its definition has been approached from many angles a close scrutiny of these views indicates that self is subject as well as object the self as a subject include the person's experience of self as a thinker feeler and actor whereas the self as an object is others person view of self for example when i feel anger or think about the idea of freedom it is i the self as the subject what do i feel but when we describe self as a object it is what other person's view of the self or me is that is the self as an object in recent years researchers have tried to understand the representations or mental models of self the experience of self is very common but yes it is a complex phenomena its structure and contents are shaped by the society and the culture in which people live based on the cultural context people divide the world into the categories of self and non self in the individualistic cultures people prefer independent self construal while people in collectivist cultures prefer an interdependent mode of self construal let us understand what is independent self construal and what is interdependent self construal the independent self construal considers self in terms of a bounded separate and individual entity which is central to all the activities of a person whereas the interdependent self construal emphasizes on the connectivity interdependence and sharing so this was about the concept of self but we must know that what are the different levels of self let us understand about these levels in detail self is experienced at different levels william james who started serious study of self talked about the material self social self 
and the spiritual self. More recently, Nizer has also talked about the ecological self. Let us learn about these selves in detail. The ecological self actually refers to the self in the embodied form that is which can be physically identified in time and space. Whereas the interpersonal self involves the self which exists in the social relations that is when we interact with others. There is one more level of self and that is known as the extended self. What is extended self? It is actually the self which is in our memory. And this level of self is very personal and private. Finally, there is a conceptual self, which is the idea of self that a person holds. What can I do? What is my perception about myself? All of us have acquired a set of ideas about what can be included within the category of self. This kind of conceptualization is nurtured in each culture in a given way. It is a comprehensive network of ideas about self. In order to illustrate this point, we may consider the concept of Panch Koshas as developed in the Indian thought. So when we are talking about the Panch Kosha, we must know what is the term Kosh means. Kosh is actually the layers or sheath like the sheaths of an onion. So in the same way, self has different sheaths. The jiva consists of five such koshas and self should be considered in terms of a multi-layered structure of hierarchically organized sheets. In order to know, know more about these sheets, there is a description which is given as follows. So, when we discuss about the panch kosha and the different sheets that a jiva has, then first of all it is the anamaya kosha. What is this sheath or what is this kosh? It involves the gross physical body. This is the outermost layer of the existence. It is called anamaya because it is grounded in the food that we eat and consume. Then comes the pranamaya kosha. This kosh or this layer deals with the life that is the prana and it represents the functions of breathing and metabolic processes. The five vectors are also included in this pranamaya kosha. Then comes the manumaya kosha. This manumaya kosha consists of sense organs. It is the seat of ego and it leads to personal involvements which bind people with the desires and activities. Next comes the vijnanamaya kosha. As the name suggests, it is about the knowledge. It consists of five sense organs and the intellect. It regulates the worldly life. The feeling of I-ness present in it relates jiva to past actions. Also, the feelings of pride take place. Anandamaya Kosha As the name suggests, it is about anand or the joyous sheath. The experience of bliss has a spiritual basis. The pleasure that one gets from obtaining the desired object is part of this Anandamaya Kosha. So this was all about the Panch Koshas. Let us know that what are the different aspects of self. In the psychological studies of self, the researchers have explored many aspects of self. They show that self is multifaceted. As you will find in the following description are ideas about self, its evaluation, its presentation and its monitoring vary among the people and shape behavior in important ways. In fact, the ideas held by people about self shape and organize our personal lives and allow participation in group life. Let us know about the different aspects of self. First is the self-esteem. It is the evaluative component of self-concept. It is basically dealing with the internalized social judgments and ideas about how worthwhile the personal quality is. Self-esteem is an important factor in one's psychological health. 
it has been found that people feel good about themselves or have high self esteem are found to be more activated, motivated, persistent and happy than the people who hold a low self esteem. So self esteem is what do we feel about ourselves? We feel we are special, wanted, loved, we are unique, beautiful, we are like a star, we are priceless etc. So as I have already discussed, those people who hold a high self esteem feel motivated as compared to those who do not have a high self esteem. Then comes the another aspect of self which is known as self efficacy which actually refers to the beliefs about what we are capable of achieving or we can explain it in other words that it refers to the perceived competencies of a person. What do I think about myself? According to Bandura, self-efficacy beliefs have power of four major influences. The first one is cognitive which refers to the effect on thought patterns. Self-efficacy influences the evaluation of capability and preparation to make an attempt. That is, the self-efficacy is that what do I think about myself? How much capable I think I am? Then comes the motivational influence which is how long we will be motivated to do something, how long we will keep trying. Then comes the effective influence which is how we deal with stress, anxiety and feelings of control. And then comes the selection and this includes choosing the challenging activities whether we choose the challenging activities or we choose the easy path. So self-efficacy beliefs have power of all these four influences which is cognitive which refers to the thought process, motivational which uh, tells us that how long we will be motivated to do something or we will be uh, trying for something. Then comes the effective component which actually is dealing with the stress and then comes the selection which refers that what do we choose? Do we choose the challenging activities or we choose the easy ones? So this has a great influence on the self-efficacy of an individual. Then comes the self-presentation which is another aspect of self. What is self-presentation? As the name suggests, it deals with the behavioral expression of self. How do we present ourselves to others? The growing importance of cosmetic and fashion industry clearly shows the degree to which we are preoccupied with our physical appearance. Everyone wants to look beautiful, look good. We are often quite concerned with the impression that we convey in the public. So this is self-presentation and this is another aspect of the self. The term self-presentation technically means the strategies that people are using to shape what others think of them. The another important aspect of self is self-monitoring. As the name suggests, what is self-monitoring? Self-monitoring is the extent to which the external situation and the reaction of others help one to regulate the behavior. For example, the politicians, salespersons and artists are high self-monitoring persons because they ultimately have to impress the other people to sell their ideas. The people who are low self-monitors regulate their behavior on the basis of internal factors such as beliefs, attitudes and interests. The another important aspect of self is self-consciousness. What is self-consciousness? If we examine our daily life, we find ourselves busy with many activities. During these activities, what happens that we are often away from ourselves. We think very little about ourselves because we do not have time. We are so busy in the day-to-day -day activities. We are not always self-focused. But there are times when certain events do compel us to turn to our own selves. Thus, when we glance into the mirror, talk to ourselves, stand before an audience or a camera or occupy an important position in a group, we become self-aware. 
when we become self-aware, we start comparing our behavior with the internal standards. And this comparison reveals negative discrepancy. Under these conditions, our self-esteem decreases. And in order to deal with this situation, we may attempt to reduce this self-discrepancy or withdraw from the state of self-awareness. It has been found that some people have a tendency to introspect the inner thoughts and the feelings, which are very private self-consciousness, while others have the tendency to be aware of the outer public image, which is the public self-consciousness. So, this is self-consciousness. So, this was about the different aspects of self. Now comes the awareness of self. How accurate are we in self-appraisal? Let us understand. It is often taken for granted that we know ourselves very well. However, in reality, this is not true. Studies show that there are many aspects of our self-concept which are known to us. And others also know about that. In other words, it is public. But there are three other possibilities that are given here. First is, there are attitudes of self that are known to the person but unknown to others. That is, you know about yourself but others do not know about you. There are certain other attributes of self that are not known to the person itself but known to the other persons. That is, other persons know some aspects about you more than you know about them. But there are certain other attributes of self that are neither known to the person nor known to the others. You can easily imagine the situation where there is a discrepancy of any kind in terms of the attributes known to the person and known or not known to others. In order to live a healthy life, proper appreciation of one's attributes is very necessary. Also, it must be a realistic appraisal. It is on the basis of an impartial knowledge and understanding of the strengths and weaknesses of oneself that proper course of action can be planned. While discussing self, it should be pointed out that people often show self-serving bias. What is self-serving bias? It implies that people try to defend themselves and view things in a way that positive attributes of self are enhanced and they are overlooking the negativity in them or they are overlooking the negative aspects in them. For example, People will explain success on any task to their ability and effort and attribute failure to external factors like chance or luck. So this is self-serving bias. We are blaming the external situations for the, for the failures and we are attributing success to our own uh, personality type. So this is self-serving bias. We are not acknowledging the negative aspects in our cells that might have caused the failure. After all this, we must know that what is the relationship of self with other processes? Self and cognition. The effects of self-construal on cognition are found in a variety of ways. It has been found that people with independent self-construal emphasize on their internal attributes as important features. Whereas the interdependent self thinkers or the interdependent self think more about relationships and context. Self and emotions also has a great relationship to share. Self, some emotions emphasize inner attributes. For example, pride or feelings of superiority are often found when someone has accomplished something. Similarly, frustration occurs when the personal goals or desires are blocked. In such situations, the emotional experience tends to separate or disengage the self from one's social relationship. On the other hand, there are certain positive emotions like friendly feelings or feelings of gratitude and respect. Experiencing such emotions promotes an interpersonal bond. Self and motivation also has a relationship. It has generally been thought that the issue of motivation deals with the internal processes pertaining to a person. What do you think you can do will keep you motivated? The ideas of needs and motives deal with these processes. 
the view is very close to the independent self contour all of them refer to the motivation related to the person or me in case of interdependent self it is noted that behaviors are directed or guided by the expectations of significant others for example the parents teachers other family members they are significant others obligations and duties towards others in this context studies of achievement motive vision provide a useful illustration which is achievement motivation deals with the desire to excel the desire is present in all cultures however it is conceptualized in different ways in different cultures in cultures where independent self is predominant this need is personally based while in the cultures emphasizing interdependent self this need is interpersonally and socially structured in the indian context where collectivism and interdependent self dominate social concern emerges to be an important aspect of thinking about achievement so dear learners this was all about today's program in which we could know about the concept of self the different aspects of self the different levels of self the panch kosha and how self is related to the other aspects so this is about today's program i end up with this note i hope you have understood the topic well thank you